Hi, my name is Dove Sinclair with the Power of the Patient Project. My guest today is James C. Kaufman. Mr. Kaufman is the author and editor of more than 45 books, including Creativity 101 and the Cambridge Handbook of Creativity with Robert Steinberg. He has published more than 400 papers, including the 4C model of creativity with Ron Baghetto and the study that spawned the Sylvia Plath effect. He is a past president of the Division 10 of the American Psychological Association. James has won many awards, including the Mesnas Research Award and the Torrance Award from the National Association for Gifted Children. Mr. Kaufman also co-founded two major journals, Psychology of Aesthetics, Creativity and the Arts, and Psychology of Popular Media Culture. Kaufman has tested Dr. Sanjay Gupta's creativity on CNN and has also appeared on the hit Australian show, Redesign Your Brain. So welcome, James. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Of course. So first, can you tell us what got you into teaching psychology and why you're so passionate about studying creativity? Absolutely. Um, I was a creative writing major in undergraduate. Always wanted to be a writer, first stories and then plays. And I was a double major in psychology because it was both my parents are psychologists. And my junior year, I sent away for some information on MFAs. And one said, if you can do anything but creative writing, do that thing. And I thought I can do something else. Um, and I kind of stumbled into psychology, but I got very lucky and was working with a really amazing scholar named Robert Sternberg and among other things, he studied creativity. And I kind of shifted my passion for creative writing towards understanding it, studying it, figuring out what makes people creative, how are people created in different ways. And it was the first kind of academic thing I really absolutely fell in love with. And I've been doing it since. Hmm. Um, that's great. That's so interesting. And I know that in your early research career, you developed the Sylvia Plath effect. Can you explain what this is and why it became so popular so quickly? Absolutely. The, the Sylvia Plath effect, it's a study of eminent writers where looking, based on studying biographies of well-known poets, nonfiction writers, fiction writers, and playwrights, and then coding for um, signs of mental illness, such as hospitalization or suicide attempts or things like that, I found a weird little hiccup that female poets were more likely to have uh, mental health issues than any other type of writer, including all the other female writers and even the, the male poets. I did a second study that looked at different types of eminent women and found the same pattern where compared to female um, politicians, businessmen, artists, writers, actors. Again, there was this link with poets. And it was an interesting little finding. It wasn't, it wasn't super interesting, to be honest. It was when I was at my former university, California State University at San Bernardino, they had a, um, they were trying to get some more press and they had some um, media people come and speak to some professors and this struck them as interesting the press releases and it kind of came out of nowhere to be honest mm -hmm. it it wasn't until it began taking off that I realized it was being extrapolated in a way that it shouldn't have been in that it was being used as evidence that creativity and mental illness were linked which it didn't show it was being used as evidence that any poet or any female poet would be more likely to be mentally ill, which it didn't show. It only looked at the absolute, you know, most eminent writers and from history when there were a lot of other factors and issues going on. Mm -hmm. And it was actually a bit of a turning point in my career because I realized, I mean, it was a very, straightforward and obvious illustration that the research I did could actually have implications and people might read about it. And it, I saw that it hurt some people and that was not my intention at all. And particularly since it was people who weren't, 
So there's people who are misinterpreting, but who are who are not aware of the nuances and and the much less interesting aspect of research. And a lot of my subsequent work has been trying to focus on the more positive aspects of creativity. Um, I is there likely some type of link between poetry and mental illness compared to other writing? Probably a little bit. It, it, is it significant? It is in a statistical way, but not in a practical way. Yeah. And certainly for anybody who wants to be a poet, regardless of, of gender or anything, mental health should in no way be any type of issue or anything that would make you not want to pursue it. Mm -hmm. So the Sylvia Plath effect is just specifically looking at female poets then. It doesn't extend to any other creative writing like songwriting or anything like that. Right. And it also particularly eminent and accomplished female poets. Mm -hmm. So it's not even, even if it, like one conception of creativity is the 4C model where it goes from mini C, which is the personally meaningful insights that somebody might have, like a ball that pops into your head, all the way from you know, to everyday creativity where people might enjoy what you do, to C where you're an expert and you're getting published and you know um, reach a lot more people, all the way up to creative genius. And really it's just at that creative genius level. And very, very few of us are at that level or ever will be, and, and that's okay. I mean, creativity is a host of amazing benefits and outcomes that have nothing to do with genius. So um, I, it's an interesting finding. It's not a particularly wide-ranging or meaningful one. Yeah, right. Well, I can see why it became popular that fast, kind of just took off and people just started app living off of it. <laughs> and I was young and stupid and not used to talking to, you know, like, I remember I was, the New York Times was interviewing me and the LA Times had beeped in on the other line. It's just, I was a psychology professor, you don't get used to that. Um, so, yeah. it was a <laughs> And um, from the Europe's Journal of Psychology in 2017, you write that you wanted to look more into creativity um, and how it can enhance social justice. So how can creativity do this? And did you find anything so far? There's a couple of really promising angles. One is looking at admissions. So if you look at what gets people selected to be in a gifted class or to get into a university or a graduate school, it's usually an array of standardized tests. Mm -hmm. And if you look at test scores, you will find that certain groups receive lower scores than other groups for a wide variety of reasons from socioeconomic status to a wide variety of stuff. And in addition, it's not even just the differences in scores, it's that these tests are less predictive for different people. So the tests in many cases were designed to predict white performance. And they are not as predictive of African-American performance and other underrepresented groups. If you look at creativity, there's no differences. Everybody has the same potential to be creative. Right. And not only that, but it's often a particular strength. And that you have this construct of creativity where it's related to academic success, and yet almost nobody's looking at it. And so it makes admissions a little less valid because you're not looking at this important thing. And it does it in a way that minimizes diversity. Where if you were to include creativity, um, one of some of the very few schools that have done this, diversity goes up and it's the same high quality of entering students. The problem is that it, it takes a little bit more effort and it costs a little bit of money and so schools aren't doing it. The other way, which is also very exciting to me, there are a lot 
of traits and abilities that are associated with creativity that range from openness to experience, where you're just you're open to new ideas, to trying new things, to perspective taking, where you can see what somebody else and feel what somebody else might be experiencing, and cognitive flexibility, where you're able to kind of just switch from one to another and be able to kind of understand that and juggle different ideas. These are associated with creativity. They're also associated with being more tolerant person. People who have these traits and abilities are less likely to stereotype, they're less likely to be racist or homophobic or misogynist, all this stuff. So these are things that if you can enhance people, it'll make them more creative, which is great. It'll also make them more equitable people. And there's been some work showing that interventions work both ways. So if you do an intervention for creative, it can help people have a more fair-minded view. Mm. Work is early, we need more studies, but it's really exciting to me that if we're trying to think of, you know, how, how can we make the world a better place? I mean, we think of creativity in terms of, well, you can invent something amazing, and that's absolutely true, but even if you're not Bill Gates or, or Steve Jobs, enhancing creativity will make you more open to other people and more accepting and, and tolerant, which I think is kind of amazing. Yeah, no, that definitely is amazing. Um, and kind of going off what you said, um, why is creativity such an under-researched subject? And are there any benefits um, or positive effects that creativity can have as, in a society as a whole? Well, I mean, I think one reason, there are a couple of reasons why I think it's understudied. One is that measurement is always an issue. So when we measure grades or IQ, there tends to be one right answer, and that makes it comparatively easy to measure. You know, if I want to know your vocabulary, I ask you, you know, do you know what this word means, yes or no, and, and it's, it's relatively straightforward. If I want to measure creativity, we have measures but they tend to take more time or effort and they can still use some work. Mm. Another thing is that creativity as a subject to study kind of falls through the cracks. So if you look at who studies creativity, you have people in business and psychology and education, neuroscience. So there were on the good part is that it's sprinkled all across domains and some of the top creativity researchers are in almost any department you can imagine. The downside is it means often, let's say a psychology department may not assume that creativity is something that is needed to be represented in their department. They may have nothing against it, but you kind of have to make a case that you're studying something else and creativity is part of that. Yeah. In terms of positive outcomes, another huge one that is to me, again, just fascinating and is the idea of meaning in life. There's a lot of defined meaning. Some of it is kind of making sense of our past and a lot of expressive writing can help that a lot. Regularly writing, and this could be in a blog, in a diary, it could be writing a novel, anything that there's a certain narrative component, if you on a regular basis, it helps you make sense of your life. It, has an amazing host of physical and mental be health benefits. There's also significance, like are we living a life that is significant and joy connected? And again, creativity. I mean, there's the basic enjoyment of being engaged in a creative activity. You can lose track of time and become immersed. It's also a way to connect with other people. It's a way, and if we look at older adults who are engaged in creativity, we find that they tend to show less passion, they tend to show lower rates of dementia, and if they've already begun dementia, it is slowed the more they're engaged in creative activities. It's a way of you know, connecting us to other people. And the third way is this concept of symbolicality, where everybody's an adult. I mean, 
we know that in a way that our dogs and our cats don't know that. Like our dogs have no conception that someday they're gonna die and we unfortunately kind of have this. And so this idea of symbolic immortality, is there something that can live on? And there's many ways of reaching this. I mean, kids is a big one, our friendships, our loved ones, mentoring, um, spirituality and religion, creativity is another idea of legacy, what can we leave behind? And it doesn't, again, it doesn't have to be this genius level. I mean, I have two paintings by my grandma in my living room. And she was not an amazing painter. She was good, but they're there because they're pretty and they remind me of my grandma, not necessarily because any art collector would want them. Mm -hmm. And it's this, it's just a way of, living on. Wow, that, that is definitely so interesting. And I definitely agree that creativity is something that needs to be a little bit more research because it seems very beneficial. Um, is there anything else that you would like to add? The biggest misunderstanding that I hear about creativity is people assume they're not creative. Hmm. We tend to have certain very fixed ideas that whether it's creativity is like an on-off switch. Either you're creative or you're not, not true. It's more like a dimmer switch where maybe you're very creative or kind of creative, but it's still somewhere there. Another one is that, oh, I'm, I'm not artistic. You can be creative in anything, science, business, everyday life, cooking, anything. Um, or that I'm not creative because I don't do these huge, amazingly impactful things that make people go, oh my God, you're so creative. Creativity, again, can be these smaller contributions or even just your own take on something. It doesn't have to be something that is paradigm shifting. Mm -hmm. And just this idea that the lowest can be created and the lowest level is, is still has all these personal benefits. No, no, I completely agree. Well, thank you so much for joining me and explaining creativity a little bit more. I certainly learned a lot and I'm sure all of our viewers will too. Yeah, thank you so much for having me on. Of course.